Hello, one and all. Today we are tackling a hacker rank problem known as absolute permutation. I do not know why this front end is all jacked up like it is. It still works, so whatever. Absolute permutation is a medium difficulty problem. As usual, I will go over the problem, give you some time to do it on your own, and then go over my solution. So let's check it out. We define P to be a permutation of the first N natural numbers in the range 1 to N, and let position I denote the value at position I in the permutation p using one base indexing that is a whole lot of words oh my goodness uh okay so p is considered to be an absolute permutation if position i or the value imagine that being a list right basically it's saying like the value at that position i minus the index itself i and you're using absolute values equals some value k and this holds true for every index in that range one to n uh, I'm going to explain this because it is unnecessarily complicated with the wording. So what the problem is saying is if you're given an N of four and a K of two, you're establishing that there is an array of one, two, three, four. Okay. There are these numbers that are supposed to be within an array. And these are associated with an index that also is one base indexing. So here on the top, I have like the values. So I'm actually going to rename this to vowels because that's like actually with like the values and this these are the indices. So right now the indices and the values, they're, they're basically the same thing, the same representation, but we're given a K of two. So what K of two means, and I'll go back for a second, the value at that position minus the index equals K and you're doing absolute value. So we're told that the absolute difference between the value and the index needs to equal to K. So right now we don't have that because if we look at this value I and this index, we can see that value minus index, which would be one minus one, and then absolute value is zero, and that does not equal K right now. It's supposed to be two. One number could be, well, three. So if this was a three, then certainly three minus one, that would work here. Absolute value makes it two, and then K is two, and that actually works. But then you'll see that we don't have space for the three over here now. So now we're kind of like in a question mark, like, well, what's supposed to go there, right? And, and if you actually work it out, you can see that you can actually place a four here on the second position because, you know, the difference there is two. And then the difference here needs to also be two. We can put a one here. So that might look weird, right? Because it's one minus three because the value minus one is negative two, but it's okay because we're doing absolute value. That's still two. Okay, so this is actually a valid solution. And this is essentially the end result that we're looking for. We want to get the list arranged properly so that each of the vowels minus the index absolute value equals k and that is possible so we would return this list one thing i will note here is this idea of lexographically smallest value so what they're saying is whenever possible you want to arrange the numbers as if it was like a you know just a single number so for example if this is 3,412, there may be a, a setup that allows for everything to work, but you might have the number be like 4321. And this would be larger than this. And so you want to, if possible, you have preference towards the smallest possible value. I'm not saying this would work, by the way, I know it doesn't, but I'm just saying like as it, as as all the permutations that are possible that this number might actually work out and if it did then you would still pick the smallest one that's that's what that means lexicographically smallest so k of zero is actually really easy if you think about it because if i go back a second k of zero basically means one two three four uh this is the this is the setup for zero right because one minus one each index minus its value if it's the same thing is always going to be zero so if, it, if this k is zero then this like kind of default setup is the this is the best arrangement and it's also the smallest one because each number is like going in order so anyway that's the problem i'm going to give you some time to do it on your own and then i'll go over my solution okay so the trick here is kind of understanding that each index has two possible values that it could capture so here's what the math kind of looks like i'm not the best at math so this is my like very naive understanding but if i take the equation they gave us which is the value minus i absolute value equals k whereas the value minus i equals the positive or negative value of k if you do that let's do like a little split here because this positive and negative can basically go two ways so if we take the positive route and we can like shift the i over we can do plus i to, and put it on the right side here then we get the value equals k plus i which is the same thing given the i think commutative property is what it's called you can just switch because adding is just the same thing as adding it the other way so i plus k is the same as k plus i so this is like kind of the end result this one here the other is going the other route where you take the negative k and if you have negative k 
and you take the minus i here, you add you add it to both sides, and then you get negative k plus i, which is the same thing as saying i minus k. For each i, there are potentially two possible valid values. So essentially one that's like the higher value, which I call the upper value, which is always going to be i plus k, and the lower value, which is i minus k. So for now, I'm just going to focus on this little box right here, that little area. And what we're going to do, I'm not even going to work on the algorithm. I'm just going to pre-calculate what each i's lower and upper values are. And we'll kind of see what that looks like. So for the index of 1, we know k is 1 as well. So um, we'll I calculate the lower to be i or 1 minus k, and that's a 0. And the upper is 1 plus 1 is 2. So we see something kind of going on here. This 0 is actually not even possible as a value to be put in our list because we're told that the numbers that are in the our list are between 1 and n. So we already know 0 is actually too low. So this is actually not even possible. So for this position, we're definitely going to have to pick 2 because the other value is not even possible. Uh, you can just kind of go down the line. There's a 1, 2, 3. You can kind of see that it is always like increasing by 1 here, which makes sense. And this is also increasing by 1 here. Let's look at how I would actually start filling in our list from this information. Here I have a set of all available values. And we're going to keep these in mind because once we lock one in, we basically won't be able to use it for later. And we already saw here that for this index i of one, we know that we can't use the zero. So this is kind of like crossed out. We have to use the two. So we have to put a two in here. And that means our possible values that we're grabbing from two is not even possible anymore. And so I'm going to kind of highlight this to just showcase like which ones we're picking. OK, so we go now to the index two. So the possible values are one and three. We definitely want to pick the one because it's a smaller number, given that we're trying to go with this whole lexicographical thing. So we're going to grab the one for now. Now we go to the three and two and four are the only options. Now we know that we can't use the two. There's no two here. It got locked in here and we couldn't pick anything else. So we only can pick the four here for this four. We can either grab a three or a five. Three and five are both available, so we definitely want to get the lower number, so we'll grab the, two, the three. All right, for the five, we either have a four or six. And again, we couldn't choose anything but the four here, so we have to pick the six because that's the only thing that's available now. And for the index six, we either have a five or a seven. We can pick either one because they're both available, but we'll pick the five because it's small. For the seven, we have either the six or the eight. The six was locked in before, and so we can only pick the eight here. And for the index of eight, we either have a seven or a nine. We have both available, so we're definitely going to pick the 7. For the index of 9, we can either get an 8 or a 10. 8 was used up previously, so we can definitely grab the 10. And for the last value, well, only the 9 is available, but that's a possibility, so we will grab the 9 for sure. We've used everything up, and this is essentially our answer. This value, this list right here, is the answer to n of 10 and k of 1. Okay, I'm going to show two more. This one, for now, is going to be n of 8 and k of 2. I'll kind of go through this quickly just to show you what the answer will look like. And so that's what that answer looks like for n of 8 and k of 2. And I, I also just want to show kind of like a negative situation where you're not able to uh, solve the problem. Here I have n of 10 and k of 3. So let's look what that looks like. Okay, so once we get to index 8, we do run into a problem where we have only two possible values of 5 and 11. 11 is too, too high and 5 has been locked in early uh, at index two. So there's actually no possible value that we can put in here. So here it, we won't be able to go any further. So we're actually locked out. And this is actually a solution that's not possible. All right, so let's go into the code. All right, so this code is actually not too complicated. And I added one little extra step here where if k is zero, we already know that we don't need to do anything. So here I'm just returning a list of the range between one and n. So here I'm creating a set of uh, the range between i and n. And then I'm also looping for i in range 1 up to n plus 1. Uh, I have to use that because i is 1 indexed. And here I'm just calculating the lower and upper values, i minus k and i plus k. And here I check if lower is in the cache. That's the preference, so I'm having that first. If it's in the cache, I want to grab it. So I'm going to remove it from the cache. And I'm going to add that to my growing output list, which is our solution, essentially. If that can't be found, if lower the lower value is not in the cache, then I'm going to try the upper value and do the same thing, essentially. And if neither of those are possible, then I know that the solution is not possible. I return negative 1. And that's basically it. Let's run some code. All right, let's submit some code. Hey, there we go. All right, let's go over some big O notation. So 
creating this like list and this i guess this set i'm going to include it for now we go up n because creating the range and creating a set is actually like in, inputting each one at a time so there there is something there i'm also looping through the range here uh so this is also big open and these operations removing and appending are all constant time so i don't need to worry about that pretty much everything here is constant time so this is big of n for the final total time complexity all right, that's it for today. So uh, if this is the kind of content you like, make sure to like, subscribe, do all the good things, and I'll see you next time. Take care.